Joining us on the news of this hour, we're staying with development at the National Assembly where the Senate today approved the removal from office of the Chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Daladi Umar, for alleged misconduct and improper behaviors from a holder of such position. More than two-thirds of members of the Upper Legislative Chamber adopted the resolution after invoking Section 157, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Permitting President Tinubu to remove him from office for his inability to discharge his functions diligently. National Assembly correspondent Tijeswa Adeoye has moved. The weight of wrongdoing by the CCT chairman Dan Ladi Umar may have tipped the scales, prompting the upper legislative chamber to take a firm stance seeking his removal from office. Expressway. Invoking section 157, subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which requires the consent of two-third majority of the Senate to prompt the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces to remove Yakubu Danladi Umar as Chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal. The Senate resolves to invoke and activate the constitutional provision as enshrined in Section 157, Subsection 1, by forwarding an address supported by two-third majority of the Senate, which shall be acted upon by Mr. President for their official removal from office of Mr. Yakubu Danladi Umar. By our tradition, leadership don't sign the register. So 74 plus 10 makes 84, and therefore we have gotten the required constitutional requirement to proceed as enshrined in our 1999 constitution as amended, removing the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal from office as a result of acts of misconduct. This brings to an end the reign of a man that held sway at the Code of Conduct Tribunal since 2011. It paves way for Minasara Kogu, to assume office following his appointment by President Tinubu in July. Adequate and decisive measures. In another development, the Senate has urged the Nigerian military to maintain its presence and vigilance to stop the infiltration of violent terrorists known as Lakurawa in the Northwest states. The Senate is aware that if timely, adequate and decisive measures are not taken, this group can spread its foreign reign of terror to other parts of northern parts of the country and beyond. Also, the Senate has asked its Committee on Works to investigate the reasons behind the non-completion of repair works on the Odupani Itsu Highway in Cross River State. Observes that the highway has been in a state of disrepair for years, with significant portions uncompleted despite repeated promises and allocations in federal budgets. The clerk of the Senate has been mandated to send a letter to President Tinubu to communicate the removal from office of the Chairman, Code of Conduct Tribunal, Dan Ladi Umar. Tijesu Adiri, TVC News, Abuja. John Omina, a spokesman of the Senate, Senator Yemi Adaramudu. Thank you for joining us on the news this hour. Let's begin with what the specific misconduct allegations were that led to Justice Umar's removal and how the Senate investigated these claims. Yes, good, uh, good evening and uh, thank you uh, for, for that. Yes, today the Senate moved that, yes. Like uh, Nigerians will be saying that uh, the Nigerian Senate has not been doing enough oversight over the executive arm of government, uh, especially about the conduct and then the, uh, the activities and then what the executive and the judiciary, that what they are doing. So today we have been receiving a lot of petitions against uh, the so-called uh, chairman of the Code of Conduct Bureau. Dan Ladi Umar, we have been receiving a lot from individuals, from groups, even from CSOs. And then at the height of it was the, the brawl that the chairman of the Code of Conduct had at Barnex Plaza with a woman just of recent. And 
so consequently, in the ninth assembly, he was invited when there were when there were a deluge of 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 excuses and the complaints about him. He was given the opportunity to come and defend himself. He did not take that opportunity. He did not even come. He shunned the National Assembly then. That's why that fact, all these kind of nefarious activities and actions of the chairman of the Code of Conduct Bureau did, were not abated. Then, they, uh, they, they, then what is very curious is that for not less than three or four months, he did not even show up in the office. The office was under lock and key. And we just find out that somebody that is going to be looking at the conduct of Nigerians, of the public servants, public officers, and then even the general public. And if that person, that person's conduct is very, very unbecoming, it's quite on, it's nationally uncharitable, and it's something that it is not to write home about. Then the Senate that screened and confirmed him after he was nominated by the, presi by the presidency. So it means that the president will nominate and then the Senate on behalf of all Nigerians will now do the hiring. And then the hiring included the screening then and then the confirmation for him to be sworn in and to be all made right. the chairman of the Code of Conduct Bureau who is now yeah. going to be in charge of of uh, having a queries, making inquiries into the conduct of public officials. And then if he is the person that is not living up to the billing of being a code of conduct czar, which he was supposed to be. So the only thing that the Senate could do is to swing into action and to ensure that discipline is maintained and instilled. And that one will serve as an example, as an impetus to other Absolutely. public officials who had been screened and, be, and confirmed by the Senate that, yes, when you are not living up to the billing, when you are not uh, living up to the constitutional requirements that your office uh, carries, then definitely the Senate should move against you. Yeah, you're and then that's and what I think, the Senate I think, has I done think, today. I think you made your point very clear there. In fact, um, it's interesting to hear you say um, the justice did not come to office for about three months. But what are the Senate expectations yeah. now from President Bola Tinubu regarding this resolution? And what exactly is the timeline for his response in this regard? Yes, we have, we have done what is required of us to do by the Constitution. Because when you look at Section 157, subsection 1 of the Nigerian Constitution, it gives us that, it gives us that absolute power to, to make inquiries to call to order and to make sure that the magnificence of any public official does not go just unnoticed and just unqueried. So that's what we have done and then we have made, made our recommendations after it has been passed by not less than two-thirds majority of the Senate today. 84 of us were there. We were supposed to be only 73 that could even do that legislative uh, business. But 84 of us were there. So after passing it, and then it's not only a resolution, it's already a mandate from the Senate that the President must look at, at it. And so a correspondent has already been sent to the President to effect right. it effectively and immediately for that matter that Mr. Danla the Uma, the Aswile Code of Conduct Bureau Chairman, should be removed and then right. another person should take his place. So that is just the point, and that is it. It's, the co it's constitutional. We'll it's our role to do. And then, because there had always, always been a clarion call to the National Assembly, that is the Senate. That Distinguished, I guess we're going to see how Mr. President sure that will Our oversight functions over the executive and the judiciary should be sharpened. And then today is an example of it. But I'm afraid we'll completely run out of time. Thank you. Thank you for your submission. Spokesperson of the Senate, Senator Yemi Adaramudu, thank you for joining us on the news this hour.